I'm Joe Dillette and we're going to talk a little bit about sharpening. I have this here belt sander that I use for putting the right angle. I set the angle. A carving tool should have an angle of about 22 degrees. So if you take a piece of paper, you have a 90 degree angle, you bend that, fold that paper like this, bisect that angle. This angle here now is a 45 degrees. You bend it again, fold it bisecting the angle, and now it's like 22 and a half degrees. And then you set that angle by moving this base. Put this up against the belt sander and then you adjust, I have a hole here in this piece of wood that holds it and you adjust your angle. So the purpose of this video is if you don't have one of these, how can you maintain that angle? So first of all, we don't want to get a hollow ground, so we need to be against a flat surface. So I've set up, I'm setting up a fixture here on how to do it with using a drill and a grinding wheel. So to begin with, it's just a regular drill. And I put a grinding wheel on an arbor, just put it into the chuck. You want something that's fairly low speed and has enough torque to do the grinding. And a drill is ideal for that. And they're cheap. So then I just have a box. Just anything to raise it up. And we're going to use the flat surface here for the grinding. So I just need to fasten it. What I've got is a piece of wood here. You can see a little fixture to hold it so it doesn't pivot and move around. So I'm just clamping the drill in the place here. So I've just got a C-clamp that's just going to fasten this down to the box. Try to square it up a little bit. There it is. The box I have clamped to the table, so that's not going to move. And now we just need something to reference with that hole in it. And this here board here is going to work. So it's a hunk of 2 by 4 that I have made. And I'll just take, and before I put the hole in here, I'll just get a position here on the wheel. So we're using the flat side of the wheel. And about that height there is what I need. So I will take and put a clamp on that. That will reference the back. This doesn't have to be flat. So I can move it now up and down. And when I get it into position, then I can clamp it with a C-clamp here in the front. So everything will be stable. So I've got the pedestal now that I can put this against here. So now what I need to do is to get my angle right. So I lay this against the wheel and I set my angle on the tool. I just eyeball it. And that's about where the tool is going to be. So I'll get a pencil. and I will mark where that hole is going to be here. So I'm going to carve a hole into that piece of wood and then we can do the fine adjustment. I'll do a measuring again because that will lower it down a little bit. So I'm just carving the pocket in here in the wood. Doesn't have to be fancy, just a hole. And you want the tool to be able to spin on it but not come out of the pocket and so that looks like that's going to hold it pretty good all right so i'll go back and i'll measure my angle again 
So I'm just laying this piece of paper here up against the flat part of the wheel, putting the tool into the pocket, That looks like that's pretty good. These tools, they come, they've got the angle that's close, but it's not quite there, and they're really not sharp, so we have to do the whole set. So when I'm doing a whole set of tools, I like to make a little fixture like this. Normally I do everything freehand, but it's nice to have a fixture to maintain that really nice flat angle. You don't want to use the round part of the wheel here. Maybe we could come across like this to use the flat part, but you don't want a hollow ground. So this here curve on here would make it a hollow ground, and that kind of works against you because you need a little bit of the angle down here as the fulcrum of the lever to bring your tool out of it. So hollow grinding kind of works against you. Making the this here, using this flat side of the wheel, is going to work just wonderful. Almost forgot my safety glasses. Now I want to get it turning this way, so I'll switch the direction. It really doesn't make any difference what direction it's turning. I just didn't want the sparks flying up in my face. I want to point the sparks down. So it's maintaining a beautiful angle. It's repeatable, so you can go right back to that exact same spot. This side of the wheel, if this paper gets in the way, you can just rip it off. But you can dress this side of the wheel, and it just, it'll work just as good as this surface, except we need that nice flat surface. So this is a V-tool that I'm doing. If you want to do a gouge, These tools are new, they've never been used, so they've got the protective coating. So when I go to this, because the tool is the same length as this one, it's going to be very close to the same angle, but still, I put the paper up there to check the angle. That's very close, so I can use that same angle. Now this one is very close to the same angle that we're grinding because it's hitting real even right about the center of that bevel. That one done it very quickly. So what I'm doing is I'm watching for the heat to make sure it doesn't get too hot because even 400 degrees is going to start changing the hardness of this. So we don't want to get over 400 degrees. You always want to be able to touch it. But I have the wheel going slow enough and I'm not putting very much pressure on it. So now I make sure I have a little bit of a burr in the inside that this wheel will turn over a burr 
And once you have that bird, that's as sharp as that stone is going to get it. So now when I go to buff it, I'm using my north, the normal buffing. I'm not setting up a fixture like this to buff. But I could. But I buff also the inside, the curved side. The buffing, you're only using a half micron abrasive. You're not going to be changing the angle. So you're just kind of buffing it, polishing it, and just doing that microscopic finish on the edge. Thank you.